<laughs> Shall we begin? Welcome to the Happy Monster Cast. I'm your host, Scott Marchand Davis of Happy Monster Press. Let's begin. This week on the Happy Monster Cast, the heap of peeps encounters a group of Weisenheimers and takes on the hole in the head gang. Previously on the Happy Monster Cast, a heap of adventuresome peeps have come together in the fiction city of Flume. Goop slap gobbleston, animate refuse pile, and master of contamination. Scrappy, schnozzy, slipper, smelt, expert gadgeteer, stench bottom McFighty face, a price of corn, and wielder of the mighty Enormo slice, and chitinous malice Cooper, approach master of the necromantic art of danging. Low life contains adult language and juvenile humor. You have been warned. Okay, so recap. Welcome back to Mother Hoy. Uh, you are in the bitchin' city of Flume, and you came together in the place of pondering as a result of a horrible incident in which uh, an apparent Creamfillion fanatic uh, killed a approach puppeteer by the name of Fossil. Uh, it turns out that Fossil was a humanitarian priest, and uh, when you tracked him down and attended his funeral, uh, it led to a strange tattoo on his, on his butt, uh, which looked like sort of a star-shaped ghost, a bowl with the initials PSK, a spoon, and the phrase, Ask the Goose. This, in turn, led you to Finsto the Quill, a rather uh, overdramatic tattoo artist who gave you a very complicated puzzle about various temples and determining which one was guarded by uh, cute little duckies. So, uh, what what is your uh, what responses do you have for Finsto here as he wants to know which of, which temple is guarded by the cute little duckies? Well, I, <laughs> I totally forgot to go <laughs> back to that. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> so I so he he reads off all these these clues. And I scratch my head for a little bit and I oh boy you know, blow some bubbles out of my blowhole and I pace around and stuff, and I'm thinking, huh, okay. So I, I, I scribble on my little notepad, and I, I you know, that's what I say, oh, yeah, here we go. So you want to know which temple is guarded by the cute ducks? It's the Jesus Freaks, the one that's second from the right. He says, uh, the Jesus Freaks, huh? Jesus Freaks. Yeah, let me yeah. see that diagram. So I show him the, the, the logic diagram with all my little scratches and markings and stuff and say, yeah, I used to do logic puzzles like this to kill time while I was waiting for the wind to change. This, ah, that makes sense. Can I keep this? Oh, oh well, yeah. All oh, right. What the hey, sure, uh, great. Whatever. So this is great. Uh, this thing's been itching. This thing's been itching my thorax for weeks. So. You guys, uh, first off, free tattoos for all y'all. Oh, great. Nice. nice. But you wanted to know about uh, Fuzzle's tattoo. So he came in uh, six days before he was killed and asked for this specific tattoo, very specific. And he was, you know, you know, most of my customers, you know, they like to, to, to wag their gabs a little bit. But Fuzzle... Very impatient. Wanted that tattoo done right away. Kept looking behind him. Now, I don't know what he's talking about with the goose, but he did mention something about the Garden of Smellimental Glee when I asked him about it. The Garden of Smellimental Glee? Yeah. Can't okay. dig this. It's a, it's a monastery. Smellimentalists hang there. It's about two days travel along the rim of the Keister of God. And dig this. A couple days after, some of them Jemima's witnesses show up with them do rags on their caps, and uh, they they said they wanted to know about Fossil. I didn't tell them nothing, but I did. But there's something I know that they don't. I know what PSK stands for. Catch this, catch this, freaks. PSK 
stands for Primordial Soup Kitchen. <gasps> oh. oh boy! Hey. And and there's some Weisenheimers around here. They're always talking about the Primordial Soup Kitchen. I can point you there way if you if you uh, if you get my drift. Absolutely, absolutely. Sounds like that's a next station on our journey through the universe. Okay. Oh boy. So, um, you had he points he he leads you over to a nearby plaza and drops you off, and you see a group of four heaps kind of arguing vociferously amongst themselves. Uh, one of them is uh, a bodle. He's very short. Uh, he's got one eye and an incredibly wide butt. Uh, and another one is a crouch. Uh, very skinny, very tall, very kind of kind of uh, quiet, and seems kind of mm-hmm. condescending. Uh, then there's a hork, uh, who's really really fat. And uh, he's constantly slobbering and wiping his nose on his arm. And then there's a smelf, uh, kind of kind of a chubby uh, female smelf, who uh, seems to stutter. And so they're squabbling around themselves, lounging all across the steps of this small stern plaza. A gurgling waterfall nearby obscures their words, but the debate seems pretty heated. And as you approach, you begin to overhear. In no way, I must insist that Easel Gutgobbler's performance in Curse of the Bio Blisters at the Rink Battle Theater was far superior to the hackneyed hemmings of Guy Goose Vomit in The Revenge of My Keister, insists a squat one eyed bottle. Hmm. No, uh, interrupts the crouch. They didn't even use real magic. You could totally see the strings and everything. The hork wipes his nose. It appears. As though we have attracted an audience. The uh, all four, well, three pairs and one not pair of eyes turn towards you. <laughs> the final member of the group, the Smelf, with an who is wearing an incredibly flamboyant hat, says, "We already g- gave all of our clams to the, the, the goon squad." She turns around and gives herself a wedgie. There, uh. saved you the t- trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got some low self esteem issues going on here. <laughs> it gets weirder and weirder. Okay. Oh my God. All right. So, <laughs> they seem very nervous that you're going to attack them. They're all kind of cowering. Well, Relax, folks. Relax. Uh, we are we are not here to to damage or harm. We are just here to get some information. Information. I'm great at I'm g- 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 great at uh, information. My name is Sagacious Smelf. Three times ten to the third. Th- th- these are my co- colleagues. The wedge, she points to the bottle. Minko, the uh, the crouch, and Gall, the hork. Wow! All right. So we are we are here. We are tracking down. I. I, I'm my my notes are a little bit of a scroll here, so we are tracking down who might have had a grudge out for puppeteer named what's what's the puppeteer's name? Fazel. 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 I I believe I once caught his uh, puppet show at the place of pandering. Uh, I had. Uh, did I did I hear a rumor that he was murdered? He was. Yes. Fossil Puppeteer was murdered, and then people were trying to steal his body at his funeral. It was it was a it was a disgrace. His puppets. 
They steal his body, steal his puppets. What possible use could anyone have for them? Of course, croach livers, as you should know, Wedge, are quite useful in the preparation of various reeks. What? Reeks. <laughs> reeks. Uh, reeks are uh, the the sort of potion like things that smell elementalists create. Hmm. Oh, right. To allow like casting um, casting spells. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the livers are also useful uh, in pre- in preparation of of various. Uh, excuse me. Various. Various uh, uh, contamination spells and uh, preparation of contaminants, because of course, croach livers, being as croaches can eat just about anything, and are extremely robust even after death. So, do you think that's why they wanted his body? I mean, but why? Why pursue this one croach? I mean, they wouldn't that mean that there'd be a, a thriving trade in stealing croach bodies? So, oh, what is the life of one croach compared to the great intellectual pursuits of our time? Well, I don't exactly know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> that is because you're not there, Weisenhammer, like ourselves. We discuss great philosophical concepts such as uh, the origin of the Gigiti and whether there is a corresponding nostril of God to the Kister of God. Ah, deeply meaningful philosophical pursuits, to be sure. And of course, uh, we were currently engaged in a debate about the merits of various theatrical productions when you arrived. It's the debating of facts. I'm I'm a little at sea here. Well, you know, these guys were referred to as experts on the primordial soup kitchen. Right. Okay. So let's let's ask him about that. <laughs> let's let's bring this back down to from the yes. lofty philosophical to the to the uh, more uh, mundane. So let's ask him about that. Yeah. Hey, what can you tell us about the primordial soup kitchen? Uh, I am. I am the the <coughs> I am the premier expert on the primordial soup kitchen. I know everything there is to know about it. No, I am the real expert. You can't compare your pathetic knowledge of the primordial soup kitchen to my years of experience and deep study on the subject. And the two of them start kind of throwing down a little bit. And then eventually the croach gives the hork a wedgie. And then the, so, the smell so speaks what, up. What, what, what is you, okay? you, you You look like, like a pretty... St- stalwart bunch if you take care of a little problem for us we will be happy to tell you anything you want to know see this gang gang of thugs has been they've been beating us up and stealing our clams on a daily basis they call themselves the hole in the head gang and they hang out (laughs) at the gray matter Boozaterium. Teach them a lesson like Easel Gut Gobbler taught this squiggly mass in Curse of the Bio Blisters, and we'll tell you all about the soup kitchen. Don't kill them, just make them promise to stop harassing us. Whoa, sounds good. Uh, <laughs> Beating somebody up, that I can do. Uh, <laughs> hmm. So weird. <laughs> All right, where do the okay. where does this gang hang out? Uh, the Grey Matter Boozaterium. <laughs> Where's that? Okay. Where so uh, that? they give me directions. It's not very far away. And so as you approach the Grey Matter Boozatorium, 
Uh, the doors seem to open of their own accord, and a waitress, a tall, orange-skinned ufo in a puffy red dress, greets you. Welcome to the Grey Matter Boozitarium. Your table is ready. She leads you through a confusing network of tables and patrons to a round table, set with four chairs, and all of your favorite drinks are already in place. Oh. The various patrons of the Boozitarium seem to be enjoying themselves. A telekinetic game of pin the butt on the borlo transpires between a group of ufos to your left, and two dazed-looking worms are downing shots of something foamy to your right. How did you know what our drinks were uh, going to be? This is the Grey Matter Boozitarium. All of our staff are have powerful, powerful weirdo powers, and and uh, and our and many of us are dementalists. We can see the future and determine exactly who's going to be arriving, what they want, and where to seat them. Oh. Well, cool. Um, in that case, you probably know what I'm about to ask you. Indeed, the the people for whom you the people you are seeking are not currently in the Grey Matter Boozitarium, but we expect them shortly. In fact, oh, there they are now. Huh. The doors to the Boozitarium open and reveal a group of bottles standing in the vestibule with their arms crossed and smug attitudes in their faces. Each one wears a tall foam hat with a hole in its center, except for their leader, a short fat fellow with an actual hole piercing his immense forehead. <laughs> the Bodles just stand there for a moment or two until they are certain all eyes are on them. Then the leader smiles broadly and they strut and swagger their way to an empty table in the far corner of the room. Well, these sound like just the sort of people who could, you know, use a talking to. Uh, you should know. Are they known for anything? The hole in the head like, gang? Are they known uh, to be fighting? Make uh, common knowledge rolls. All right. Okay. The, uh, the waitress says, Please be advised that fighting is not permitted in the Grey Matter Boozitarium. Booz Our telekinetic counselors will quickly evict anyone who attempts any sort of shenanigans of the type. Oh, shit. Okay. Goop slap. <laughs> You happen to go drinking with uh, a one of the with someone who is uh, who who had been uh, bullied by these guys in the past. Yeah, the real jerks, guys. I totally, totally stand by this. You know, I, I was bullied when I was younger, and like, Holy yeah, cow. I'm totally happy to dish it out to these fuckers. Uh, they are known for being dirty fighters. Yep, uh, but they're also and they're used to winning. Oh, you know what I say about hmm. bullies? They're all cowards, the whole lot of them. Hit them in the nose, kick them in the balls, make them cry, and they fall right over. <laughs> what the? Yeah, so like my character's like, oh yeah, let's let's take some names. <laughs> ask, like, I'll hurl some stuff. I don't like these guys. Like, we're going to teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Are you agreeing, Salem? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what do you do about that? Uh, well, so, yeah, I conveyed all that. Yeah. So, now that we know who these guys are and what they're all about, we go over and tell them to leave the Weisenheimers alone or else. All right. And Are you intimidating or I'm something? I am going to intimidate, maybe. Nice. There we go. Um, Scott, can I also intimidate and say, look, I've dealt with you guys before. Don't fuck with us. Yes, absolutely. You cannot. You can make a... Uh, possible. Like a kid that was bullied and then facing his bully as an adult, like with fists covered in glass and like armed for bear, like grudgingly wanting to beat the shit out of them. But okay. All right. Fury and anger and intensity. Um, all right. Trying to find my skills. Why are they not showing up? Okay, the guy with the hole in his head looks unimpressed. He I says, uh, he says, uh, uh, eh, oh, you want to throw down, eh? <laughs> you, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Because oh. I see a lot of other people here, but I'm pretty sure you're talking to me. 
Well, <laughs> my God, it's Joe Pesci. You're, 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 you're taking money from those guys over there. Yeah, aren't you? Well, we take money from a lot of people. Yeah. Well, we're concerned about these Weisenheimers. Well, leave them alone. <laughs> exactly. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're pushovers. One quick, they're pushovers. One quick wedgie and they cough up the clams. Well, that's why we're sticking up for them. Now piss off or do it and do what we tell you. You want you want to bring it, pile? Bring it. Um, yeah, I like pull my arm back and like create the snottiest, like biggest, grossest ball of like slime and farts and like slam it in his face like a web. You start to do that. And then all of you are hurled out the into the street uh, outside the Gray Metal Brusatorium. Uh, by the telekinetic bouncers, as are I weren't doing nothing. The gang. Oh, they're saying take it outside. Take That's it outside. Awesome. Interesting. I am happy to take it outside. It's fine, and I oh, weren't doing math. nothing. Okay, so here's the the foam novelty hat team here. So mm-hmm. what you're facing off with here, uh, with the hole in the head gang. Uh, they're all bottles, but they're all uh, quite different looking bottles. Obviously, uh, the leader has a big hole in his head. Uh, presumably, that's the source of the name. The rest of them are wearing foam novelty cowboy hats with holes in them. Uh, so mm. there's there's one one female bottle you think, you know, with bottles you never can be a hundred percent sure. Mm. Uh, and then. Um, there's also uh, a uh, kind of a, a little, a smaller guy uh, who's wearing robes like he might be a hocus poker. A huge guy uh, who is uh, with who's so that the leader is uh, uh, wearing a a knuckle ring. The uh, the female is pulling hooks out of her hair. And apparently brandishing them like weapons. Uh, the the hocus poker has a sharpened spoon. The huge one has a spiked club, and there's also a little guy who starts twirling two spiked chains. Very sharpened a spoon. Very very Ooh. carefully. One. <laughs> so the the red hat is the is the female. The uh, yellow hat is the uh, hocus poker. Uh, he would be he's gonna be towering. The blue hat is the big guy and the orange hat is the little guy with the chains. Okay. And uh that will put us into combat. Oh. Because they're they're ready to throw down. They saw that uh Go- Goop Slap was about to start something. And they're all for it. <laughs> They have a reputation to uphold, after all. Sure. Right. Mm. So, the holes in the head? Um, can we see the ho- their head underneath, or are we going to have to aim for lower if we're going to shoot them in the head? Oh, you absolutely can see their heads in the... Uh... Okay. That's fine, there just curious. And it's, and that's, yeah, you can, they're just wearing the hats on their, on their heads. And that's, and that's a good thing, Scrappy, because you're up first. What would you like to do? Whose turn is it? Yours. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was like, wait. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah. My bad. Let's shoot the leader. It's Bo. I take trusting Gary out of uh, combat. He doesn't sorry, get a turn. I, 
I'm like boundaries a little slow. I think I clicked roll. Yeah, you did. Uh, I can't see what I've rolled yet. I'll click roll and see what happens. Oh, it is running a little slow, isn't it? There we go. I I just noticed that my turn marker is up, so it came up after my. (laughs) Okay, so that is a miss. Really? Did I roll? Oh, I rolled a three. Uh, Let's Benny that. Okay, hit the Benny button. Oh, you guys should have reset. You guys should have reset Benny's, though. I don't know which one was rolled. I can't tell. Uh, that that my, is a hit with a raise. Came out. 13. Okay. So give me a, a damage roll with a raise, please. Okay, so that is 11 damage AP2. Uh, that will that will shake and wound him, so he is going to uh, drop a Benny and attempt to soak that wound. Which he does. Ah. That's weird. Right. I see two Bennies every time you drop one. Yeah, th- I'm not sure what's going on with that. Okay, next up is Winkle, the fast guy with the chains. And he is going to charge Stempchbottom, whirling his chains like crazy. And he's going to do two attacks with the spike chains, because he's that's how he rolls. No. First attack is terrible. Uh, not with that one. Second attack is left-handed. And still hits with a raise. Ouch. Ah. For a fairly pathetic six damage, which does which does absolutely nothing to you. It just bounces off my uh, my dung beetle hide. Exactly. Okay. Charming. All right, which means it's Stenchbottom's turn. So I'm going to return the favor, and I am not going to do anything as fancy as swinging a bunch of uh, chains around. I'm just going to hit him with the engine block of a Buick. <laughs> <laughs> Bring forth the enormous slice. Uh, that is not even close to hitting. <laughs> Damn it. Um. Okay. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna Benny that because I got him to burn. There we go. Still misses. Better. Really? Huh. This guy seems to be a very skilled fighter. Huh. Um, all right, Chitinus and Gary. Okay. Well, Gary is gonna move up to the front. Meat shield be meat shielding. You want him to uh, do his his classic bite attack? Let's do it. Forgot to put that in for Gary, but let me put it in right now. I was going to say, do you, uh, you're, you're, you're controlling his attack, yes? Yes. I mean, if okay. you really want to, you can, but... Oh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So that also misses. Wow. Was there a gang up on us on that? Yes. Still misses. Wow. Okay, we've got a ninja hat. (laughs) So what would you like to do? What is the is, is what is the area of effective fear? Uh, fear. 
by default uh, is a is specific, like one it's, a, it's a specific target, but for extra power points, uh, you can make it a uh, an area effect up to a large blast template. So you could drop it in the middle of them and hit all of them uh, for an extra three power points. Let's do it. All right. Okay. How do I do that? <laughs> uh, well, you can uh, click on the uh, your fear power. I believe that should work. There's fear. Track power points. Yep. Then you'll have to take three more off if you're in a large burst template. It. How many squares is a large burst? I'll drop one. It's uh, it's a circle, as you know. Yeah, I, it, it's a circle of. There you go. Okay. Um, what about? What's a medium look like? Yeah, I'll say you can hit them all with a medium. Oh, that's okay. extra. That's Ooh, that's nice. two. Ex, that's two extra power points. Cool. I was gonna go with that. Uh, I was actually. Hey, you suck, yellow hat. I was gonna let you go. <laughs> all right, um, make your roll. Yeah, I missed something here. Okay. Uh, all right, that that goes off. So they all get to make uh, fear tests. Yes. Starting with uh, hilarious here. They all got to beat a four. Yep. So he's fine. Oops, that wasn't him. That was uh, that's you. I'm on the wrong thing. I am not afraid. Uh, but hilarious is. I dig into your deepest soul and show you at school and nothing but your underpants. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, so let's see what Hold happens to him. All right, so he has an adrenaline surge. <laughs> oh, crap. oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out as well as planned. All right, Ardberg was... here is unaffected. Jonk. Is unaffected. Mm. Funk is unaffected. And Patton is unaffected. Oh. Mm. It's a good effort. Good effort. Good. I'm not frightening. Good hustle. Good hustle. Okay, goop slap. Any chance I could conjure a contaminant in that same square? I believe so. Let me check the range on it, but I'm pretty sure it, it's uh, range vigor. Yeah, absolutely. Which one do you want to, what do you want to summon? A wuss or a, uh, what's the other option? I forget. Uh, a wuss or a feck. No. Yeah, a wuss or a feck. Uh, I'll do a fact. So the facts uh, can tell dirty jokes and cause problems that way. Uh, Wusses, on the other joke. hand, can can uh, stink smack people. Um, I think I want to put I a fact. Um, yeah, behind the one with the whole face uh, again, just to affect area of effect and to just yeah, mess around with them and taunt them. And I hope that it makes things unpleasantly distracting and annoying. All right, give me a uh, contaminating roll. 
Okay, so that would be, let's see, eliminating. Yep, that comes off. Here is your feck. And it can now make, uh, it can now squirt uh, filthy bubbles of vapor. Sure. And uh, potentially shake people by causing them to laugh hysterically. I love it. Perfect. Cool. Ah. All right. Next up is Thunk, who is going to come in and uh, kind of size up the situation, and he is going to try to club Stench Bottom. Damn it. Ah. And he's going to fail miserably. Nice. And uh, Jonk is going to run past <laughs> Bench Bottom and try to uh, use her air hooks on Goop Slap. Do I get an opportunity attack when she runs past? She didn't move out of out of your melee out of your engagement range. Uh, uh, that does hit Goop Slap, but for a pathetic amount of damage. Mm. Aardvark is going to move in and try to punch Stench Bottom with his knuckle ring. And also completely fail. These guys are not really living up to their their rep. And uh, Let's see. Patton is going to cast Deflection on himself. And he does succeed. New round. Goop Slap, you're up first. Super. Um, I'm going to step a square back. Okay, that would give her a free shot at you. Oh, it would? Is there any... I can't do, like, a five-foot step? Nope. If you leave melee range, she she gets a free attack. Hmm. Okay. Uh, No. Can I I conjure another contaminant, or can I only use one? You absolutely can conjure another contaminant. You can also command your feck to uh, do the dirty joke attack. Oh, awesome. Then I'll, yeah, move it one square over and uh, ask them to go there. Well, it, it, it's anybody who can hear, so it's going to be everybody. Oh, cool. Awesome. Okay. Uh, including your party. <laughs> oh, uh, cover your ears, guys. I'll allow you to make an athletics roll not to be affected by the dirty joke. Okay, so that mm-hmm. definitely, the bubble pops out, the incredibly foul humor sprays out, and I need everybody to make spirit rolls. Yeah. Uh, first, athletics rolls to see if you can, if you cover your ears in time. Mm-hmm. Which, which uh, Scrappy does not. If you, if you break a four on your athletics roll, you covered your ears in time. Okay, so I did. And then you want spirit after that? Yes. Well, I covered my ears, so do I still need a spirit roll? You don't need a spirit roll if you manage to cover your ears. And these guys are on fire with their spirit rolls. Athletics. Apparently they heard that one. 17. Failed my own athletics. <laughs> Ash, so they all. Uh, I'm going to say you're immune to your own fex jokes. Okay, because I have no fex to give. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they apparently have heard it because the hole in the wall gang all shouts in unison: "The aristocrats!" <laughs> okay, Scrappy, you're up.
That's Jiangsu. Mm -hmm. Who are you shooting at? Shooting at the leader. Okay. Fire away. That will hit. Give me a damage roll. But not for enough damage to uh to damage him unless you make unless you want to Benny it. Still not enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, that gets us to uh, Winkle, who is going to uh, do his whirling chains of death thing again. He's going to do one, his right hand on Stench Bottom and his left hand on Gary. So right hand first. Hmm. That is going to hit. But is absorbed by his spongy, rotting flesh. Cool. Stench bottom. Okay. Um, right. So I was not able to contact last time, but I'm going to do this again. But actually, no, I'm going to do against the leader this time. Okay. Uh, again, the, the enormous slice. No gang up bonus on that because there's no one else adjacent to him. But but would I, would I get a gang up bonus on um, what's his face? On either on... of the other two, on Thunk or on Winkle. Okay, let me let me do Winkle then because because of the gang of bonus, so he's gonna get it. He's the one who was really hard to hit. You haven't tried to hit Thunk yet. All right, well Thunk it is. I I mean I was kind of debating, but let, let's go for Thunk. Maybe we could clear him out and then not worry about it. All right, so this is against Thunk. Uh, that hits Thunk. Mm. Okay. That. And that's enough to shake him. Cool. So the enormous slice crashes home and he's shaken. Okay, Jonk is going after Goop Slap again with her with her hair hooks. And does not connect. Uh Patton is going to try to stun uh, all of you. He's gonna he's gonna go big. Uh, that's rude. And he fails. Yay! Okay, Thunk needs to unshake. Which he does. Right, Joe. Uh, and then he is going to go after, um, he's going to swing his spike club at um, Stench Bottom again. I work the tank, sir. Ooh, that's uh, bad. That's gonna hit with a raise. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's super bad. Oh lordy. Oh my god. 35 damage. Ouch. Okay, so that's going to be six wounds. Jeez. That is the would first like, of the oh. would you like to soak? I very much would like to soak. Um, okay. So you're going to need to soak at least three of them, which means a 12. 
uh, in order to stay on your feet. So you might want to save a, bottom, a Benny for your incapacitation roll. Yeah. All right. So these are uh, what? Just <laughs> I've, I've never tried to soak six wounds at a time before. You it's a, spend a Benny, do a vigor roll. All right. Um, okay. So there's a Benny and there's a vigor. Uh, yeah, you're still, you're, you're down. So, uh, you can try to soak again, or you can save for your, you need to make a vigor roll at minus three for incapacitation to see how badly you're injured. All right. And that is without a Benny. Uh, that you don't have to spend a Benny for the incapacitation roll, but if you roll badly, you might want to uh, save the Benny to roll again so that you don't die. All right. Well, here comes. What's what's my number? What's my marker? What am I trying to get with this vigor? Uh, you want it? You're you're at minus three first off. So basically, you want ideally you want like an eleven. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Good luck. Okay, here we go. But not negative is good. That's pretty good. All right. So I would like you to go to the, the, the roll tables. Okay. Which, for some reason, are not active properly on this. So hang on. Let me see uh, if I can fix that. One second. I need to get these tables for you here. So the roll tables are on. Um, they look like the icon looks like a little spreadsheet up in the upper uh, right corner. Um, got it. Okay. And Ooh, then uh, you should find the injury table and roll on that plate and uh, click open that up and hit the roll button. And then we'll see on chat what happens to you. I don't have any. I will search for the injury table. Oh, wait, hang on. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, I didn't do the permissions yet. Yeah, I, I don't have any tables to check. Right now. Okay. Okay, so that's the injury table. Um, there should be a roll button down at the bottom. All right. Okay, I got it. Here it comes. Uh, big money. All right. Uh, so oh. your strength is down a die type until uh, your wounds are healed. Damn it. And you're also down. Ouch. But you can be healed. Even by magic. Coming. Yeah. Hint, hint, hint. Okay, Chitinous. Gary's going to try thunk? and take a chunk out of thunk. Chunk out of thunk. <laughs> Uh, Chomp. That does not succeed. And what would you like to do? You could Where try the. Uh, right now. Uh, you for some reason didn't spend yours, so you've got sixteen. So you could try the fear thing that, again. That's be thirteen, right? No, it's, uh, or 14, because I spent two 14, last Yeah. Night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 15, because fear only costs one power. No, fear costs two power points. So 14, yes. So you could certainly try the fear thing again. Let's try the fear thing again. All right. That's four more. Go for it. Give me a, uh, a dang wrangling roll. Okay, where am I? So where should I be pulling the PowerPoints from, just so I'm doing this right? It's on there. The PowerPoints are on your Powers tab. Oh. But yeah, go ahead and roll first. Let's see what happens. You won't be able to hit uh, John this time without hitting your own party, but you can hit everybody else. Oh, and that's with a raise. So all of their rolls are going to be at minus two. All right, let's see how they do here. And it'll be plus two on the fear table if... Uh... 
Okay, Aardvark just barely makes it. Oof. Winkle Mom. Eagle makes it, no problem. <sighs> Unk just barely makes it. Patton fails. Die, die. Ooh. Snakes, snakes everywhere. All right. All right, no, but you did shake him. He is shaken. Last but not least, Aardvark, uh, seeing that Stench Bottom is down, is going to move up and attack uh, even its uh, scrappy odd its goop slap. Scrappy. <laughs> Punches you with his knuckle ring. And he punches hard. Ooh. Oh, lordy. Uh, oh. That is just enough to shake you only. All right, that'll take us into round three, and that's where we're going to stop for tonight. So far, the bully's doing pretty well. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah. I thought he's not good yet. Quick little uh, bash and grab, but I'm not happy. Uh, all these are lame. You can follow Happy Monster Press on Facebook as Happy Monster Press, at our website, happymonsterpress.com, Twitter as Happy Monster PRS, or follow the podcast on YouTube, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iTunes, or Google Play Music. The Happy Monster Cast is part of the Savage Worlds Media Network. This game references the Savage Worlds game system available from Pinnacle Entertainment Group at www.peginc.com. It is unofficial media content permitted under the Media Network Content Agreement. This content is not managed, approved, or endorsed by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Certain portions of the materials used are the intellectual property of Pinnacle and all rights are reserved. Savage Worlds, all related settings and unique characters, locations, and characters, logos, and trademarks are copyrights of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. All other content is the intellectual property of Happy Monster Press. Music, Ice Cold by Jason Shaw. Oh, for sure. <laughs>